I think the protest movement that took shape in Lebanon in the summer of 2015 uh, actually stopped well shy of being anti-sectarian, and this was one of its great limitations. The, the motivating energy of this movement was to challenge the status quo by avoiding politics and talking about services, quality of life, the garbage, right? The starting point was the garbage. And most of the people involved in this movement were very afraid of alienating, uh, alienating people from different political backgrounds or ideological backgrounds. And they were also quite afraid of angering the status quo warlords that control Lebanon uh, too much because they, I think, rightfully understood that if they emerged as a legitimate threat to the ruling order, that uh, the, 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 the state and the, and the warlords would deploy the, the forces at their disposal to crush the movement, which in, in some way, manner of speaking is what ended up happening and, and derailing the movement. So in its, uh, in its evolution in Genesis, the, uh, the movement, not all its members, but the movement as a movement, stopped shy of ever calling for the full end of confessionalism uh, or even uh, stopped shy of explicitly articulating their identity and their demands as an anti-sectarian platform. And this is a, it's a delicate, it's a delicate thing to parse because individually many of the people involved in this movement have spent their, their lives opposing the confessional system. They live non-sectarian lives and they have anti-sectarian uh, politics and identities. So individually speaking, many of these, many of these uh, people who were active in the movement uh, came from that background. As a movement, however, uh, in the demands they articulated and the approach they took, uh, they were, I would say, too careful uh, to avoid sounding like they wanted to overthrow the system or sounding like they were anti-sectarian. Uh, and that ultimately, uh, not what they intended, but ultimately strengthened the sectarian uh, basis and the sectarian view of, of the way politics is organized uh, in, the, in the society. And, and one other uh, element of this is that uh, even these uh, non-sectarian or anti-sectarian uh, activists were so painfully and acutely aware of the possibility of appearing sectarian, sectarian in, in their politics that it created an, almost a kind of paranoia. For example, if they were going to uh, criticize the prime minister or criticize one of the ministries, they would then uh, have to strategize and plot how not to seem like they were picking on the sect to which the party of that particular minister uh, or prime minister belonged. That's not their fault. That's a pathology of Lebanon, but that's a, a, a trap that they didn't find a way to break out of. Does sectarianism promote pluralism in Lebanon? My view is uh, uh, to, to a limited extent, yes, but ultimately it creates more damage uh, than it causes. The argument that sectarianism helps uh, prop up pluralism is a simple uh, power, uh, a, a power calculus uh, that essentially in a patchwork nation where no single sect can dominate the others, all sects emerge with enough rights or enough share of the spoils uh, that they uh, get to retain uh, their, their identity, their character, their culture, and even a uh, share of, of political power. Uh, I think. That, that plays out to some extent, but actually uh, 60, more than 60 years, uh, 70 years after the, uh, the National Pact, uh, which was supposed to be a temporary workaround that assaged sectarian fears while aspiring to something non-sectarian as, as a political system, what we've got is actually a, a, really, uh, a really toxic uh, structural pathology uh, where uh, uh, only the only pluralism that's protected is sectarian pluralism. So if you want to uh, have an identity as a political Christian or a political Shia, uh, this system absolutely gives you space uh, to, 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 to be that way without fear of erasure. But if you seek to live as a mixed confession uh, 
Lebanese or a non-religious uh, Lebanese or a nationalist Lebanese or, or a communist Lebanese, actually the system works very hard to erase that category of identity. Uh, so I think the kind of pluralism that the system protects is a very superficial one and, and the, the costs are so high uh, that, that, that they're, not, they're not worth it. In my view, the main lesson of the Ustink movement and the, the, the sort of year of rebellion that grew out of the 2015 protests and culminated with the Beirut Medinati and other independent campaigns in the, uh, in the municipal elections of 2016, uh, the main lesson I took from that whole experience is that without politics, without an overt uh, challenge, to the structure of the status quo and the ruling order, there will be no movement uh, forward. Not incremental reform, not major structural change, uh, and not by any stretch of the imagination a uh, real political uh, renegotiation. Uh, this, this might sound simpler or, or glib, uh, but, but it's actually, it's a, it's, a profound, uh, it's a profound observation that many of the participants in this movement were aware of and struggled with openly. They didn't avoid the question. And the question was, uh, do we define ourselves as a political movement? And if so, do we come up with a political agenda, an ideology, a platform uh, that challenges uh, the, the, the principles of, of the way this country is governed? And uh, in almost every case, at every juncture, uh, whether it was the protest movements or later the the political campaigns that emerged to contest municipal lists, they all uh, bent over backwards to portray themselves as apolitical, as outside of politics, standing beyond sectarian identity, standing beyond the political party order, and standing aside from any overt quest for power. And this, again, I think is a fatal mistake because unless you contest power, seek power, and articulate a clear uh, and compelling political agenda, you'll never have the momentum uh, to challenge power and you won't attract the depth of support that's necessary to challenge the status quo. What you do get is casual support, uh, well-meaning but superficial support, people who are in favor of less traffic but more parks, less garbage, which after all, who isn't in favor of all those things? But when you ask people to uh, spend, let's say, weeks or months volunteering for a campaign or years and years uh, working to implement actual political change, you need a much more uh, profound uh, identity and agenda uh, around which to mobilize them. Mm -hmm.